Today, I'm going to talk about a crazy epidemic of autoimmune diseases. One out of every 12 people will develop an autoimmune disease. One out of nine adult women will develop an autoimmune disease. It is way more common. In heart disease, with cancer, it's one out of 14. So since the 50s and 60s, we have a 3x spike in autoimmune diseases. In this graph right here, you can see Crohn's disease going straight up. You see MS and type 1 diabetes. So normally, the immune system has a very complex and difficult job creating tolerance for our own cells. In other words, it has to differentiate our own cells and our own friendly microbes and differentiate that from external pathogens, viruses, microbes, etc. And the hallmark of an autoimmune disease is really inflammation. So we have this inflammatory reaction because the immune system is attacking it. But I want to explain the single common denominator with all autoimmune diseases is this intestinal permeability, leaky gut. The small intestine where 90% of all the digestion occurs and you have a little mucus layer, you have these little villi and you have this single cell layer between the internal part of the intestine. Food particles are supposed to be absorbed through that in a certain way. But when there's holes, because there's leaky gut, we lose that immigration, that stamp of approval. We allow uh, things through that area. And now we have a massive confusion. We have things that are incorrectly tagged as harmful. And then we have a cascade of effect that can then lead to problems at any tissue in your body. There's several companies that provide this online uh, test. It's not too expensive. You can get them. I'll put a list of several down below and find out if you have leaky gut. And then what you can do is make some changes and then redo the test, you know, maybe every month or every couple of months to see how it's improving. What creates damage in your intestine? There's been a paper, 2005, they found 287 industrial chemicals in the fetal cord blood of 10 newborn infants. We're talking about chemicals from plastics, pesticides, chemicals that are flame retardants. I mean, this is bizarre. But then we have gluten. Okay, gluten can trigger Hashimoto's and celiac. It's the only proteins that we cannot, as humans, digest. So as you know, most of the wheat in America, at least, is sprayed with glyphosate, which Monsanto sold uh, Roundup to Bayer, who now has a big problem because they have over 100,000 lawsuits against them. But unfortunately, our food system, corn, soy, cottonseed, canola, have been heavily doused with this Roundup Ready, which has been patented as an antibiotic. Glyphosate has been known to cause leaky gut as well. Being an antibiotic, it destroys the microbiome, which is going to create more inflammation in your gut. On top of that, it interrupts certain enzymes, especially in your liver, the phase one, phase two detoxification enzymes. And so then you're getting these chemicals, but then you can't get rid of the chemicals. Once you get the inflammation in the gut, you can't absorb vitamin D that well anymore too. So vitamin D is uh, the most important vitamin for your immune system. It helps prevent autoimmune diseases. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's almost impossible to develop an autoimmune disease unless you also have some degree of a vitamin D deficiency. And then you have also the seed oils that are from grains as well, right? Soy oil, canola, cottonseed, corn, etc. If you take a look at the graphs of seed oils, I mean, it's like one of the common things that parallels, it goes straight up since the late 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, people have just been consuming so many seed oils. And then we just have ultra-processed food ingredients. That would be a combination of seed oils, refined sugars, refined starches. I mean, 83% of all calories in the grocery store are ultra-processed foods. Those ingredients create inflammatory states in your gut. And the next one on the list are certain medications. PPIs, for example which people take for GERD or heartburn, things like that. Well, there's something called drug-induced lupus, okay, from PPIs. This next thing I'm going to talk about is the icing on the cake, and that is a stress-induced autoimmune disease. In practice, I actually personally interacted with 
about 40,000 patients over the course of 30 years. And when someone would come in with an autoimmune disease and I would do a history, there is always some stress event that occurred right before they developed the autoimmune disease. Stress activates cortisol. Cortisol paralyzes your immune system. So this is the solution. Number one, you're gonna to have to avoid the seed oils and you're gonna to have to start eating really clean, grass-fed, things like that. I'm gonna highly recommend you get on a ketogenic diet with high quality animal proteins as well as a good amount of fat. When I switched my diet off these grains to more beef, red meat, things like that, I remember my gut was feeling so good. I had normal bowel movements. I mean, I was, it was bizarre because I thought you needed all this like grain fiber bran to help you go to the bathroom. Well, that constipated me. And uh, like I said, whatever they are telling you to do, go in the opposite direction. With this healthy version of keto, should you consume vegetables or not? I recommend that you don't consume raw vegetables. I recommend you cook every vegetable that you consume because the raw vegetables, the fibers can also activate certain problems because you have a leaky gut. As far as fermented vegetables like sauerkraut, kimchi, maybe some pickles, have a, a, a moderate to a smaller amount of that. If your gut inflammation is really bad, okay, then I would go complete carnivore for at least a couple of months. But I think if you could tolerate at least some cooked vegetables and the fermented vegetables, that can help with the increase in the microbiome. As far as vitamin D goes, yes, you need vitamin D a lot. I would recommend anywhere between 30 to 50,000 IUs per day for a period of time. L-glutamine might be a beneficial um, supplement to help heal the gut, you're going to be getting this glutamine from red meat or any type of uh, animal uh, protein that you consume. There's one more remedy that you may want to try, and that's called colostrum. When you start taking colostrum, take very, very small amounts because yes, it does have uh, some milk proteins that you might be allergic to, but the only reason I'm even bringing this up is because colostrum has a really powerful immune function. But those are the changes that I would recommend to help turn this thing around. Since we're on the topic of inflammation, you should probably see this video where I talk about the number one food that can help you heal and regenerate. And it's right here. Check it out.